Yes, good day. This is 300 plus academy where all we do is exams tutoring, making sure that you ace your next exams via our uh, slick lectures. Okay, come along with me as we move into the subject physics. This time around, talking about measurement of the fundamental quantities of physics, talking about length, mass, and time. Uh, Taking off uh, this measurement uh, lecture is going to be how do we measure length? How do we measure length? Recall that length is one of the three most fundamental uh, quantities. So how do we measure length? Of course, we make use of a meter rule. By the way, uh, for you to understand this uh, lecture very well, I'll implore that you get with you your 30 cm ruler or oh, I have mine here, this is a 100 centimeter ruler, which is otherwise known as a meter rule, so that you can understand this once and for row. Okay, not to forget that uh, when we talk about length, okay, we could use various units, but for the SI units in physics, we deal in meter. So, and don't forget, we know that, okay, we can have in millimeter, centimeter, meters, and kilometer, Whereas 10 millimeter makes one centimeter, 100 centimeter makes one meter, and a thousand meter makes one kilometer. And when you seemingly move from the smaller units to the higher units, you divide. And when you move from the higher unit to the smaller unit, you are going to multiply. That's just about a conversion there. So, talking about measuring length, we use the meter rule. And uh, you will see that, okay, let me use this to represent my meta rule uh, for the purpose of clarity, okay? Talking about the uh, meta rule, if you look at, let's this be my 0 cm mark, and then 1 cm, and then 2 cm, you can see that this is going to be my 0 0.5 mark. This is my 0 0.5 mark in there. This is my 0 0.5 mark, so that uh, this is... 0 0.1 centimeter, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, and then 1 centimeter. But if I'm not talking in centimeter, that would be 1 millimeter, 2 millimeter, 3 millimeter, 4 millimeter, 5 millimeter, 6 millimeter, 7, 8, 9, 10. That is to tell you that 10 millimeter makes 1 centimeter. So when we talk about a meter rule, a meter rule, the smallest graduation, or in other words, uh, when we say the accuracy to which it measures, it measures to an accuracy of um, it measures to an accuracy of one millimeter or zero point uh, one centimeter. Look at it from here to here is zero point one. 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 So a meter rule measures to an accuracy of zero point one centimeter or one millimeter, since 10 millimeter makes one centimeter. That is the smallest graduation. So now let's imagine that I am trying to measure a certain length and I'm stuck uh, somewhere in between, this is 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and then this is 0 0.3. So I'm in between 0 0.2 uh, centimeter and uh, 0 0.3 um centimeter look at the 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.3 if i'm stopped somewhere in between 0 0.2 and 0 0.3 what i am going to do there i cannot say okay i'm going to approximate to 0 0.2 and i cannot say i am going to approximate or estimate things to 0 0.3 rather what i'm going to do is that i'm going to estimate things accurately to have of uh, the smallest graduation there. So since the smallest graduation on a meter rule, and if I'm talking in centimeter, if I'm talking in centimeter, since the smallest graduation is 0 0.1, that is going to mean, I am going to assume 0 0.25 centimeter here. Look at it very well. The reading accuracy, that is, I can read on a meter rule to an accuracy of the smallest graduation. So the smallest graduation here to here is 0 0.1 centimeter. So 
half of 0.1 centimeter is 0.05 centimeter and for which reason we do say that uh, a meter rule measures to two decimal places if you're dealing in centimeter you can see that i cannot have 0.24 no i cannot have 0.26 no it is going to be five because that is half of the smallest graduation but if i'm dealing in millimeter of course look at it zero one millimeter two millimeter three millimeter. so in between two millimeter and three millimeter if that is where i'm stopped so what that means is that uh, if i'm dealing in millimeter, that in millimeter that will be half of that one millimeter now 0 0.5 so in this case i'll be saying 2.5 millimeter that is what i can estimate things accurately to half of the smallest graduation so that um, in that case i can say okay uh my meter rule can measure to one decimal place if i'm dealing in millimeter so that uh, i said the measurement can be to plus or minus 0 0.5 millimeter not more than that so in here it means that i cannot be saying 2.4 millimeter i cannot be saying 2.7 millimeter there is no way i can arrive at that using my meter rule i can only arrive at half of the smallest graduation and that is 0.5 so if i'm dealing in millimeter but when i'm dealing in centimeter that means uh, the smallest graduation is 0 0.1 so divided by 2 that is going to give me 0 0.25 uh, that's going to give me 0 0.05 centimeter which i am going to now add uh to whatever centimeter i have before like in this case 0 0.2 so since the smallest graduation is 0 0.05 added to 0 0.2 0 0.25 so measurements can be plus or minus 0 0.5 millimeter that's if i'm dealing in millimeters but if i'm dealing in centimeter it is plus or minus 0 0.05 centimeter and also talking about the meter rule we can use a meter rule to measure a uh, very uh, long uh, length okay also i haven't uh, talked about that if we have a meter rule and we want to measure let me put that this way you need uh, let's say this is what i want to measure here uh, as you can also see displaying on your screen uh, you need to avoid what we call parallax error. I cannot take this measurement slanting sideways. That is going to give me error of judgment. So whatever it is I want to measure, I have to look at it just vertically. If it were to be in positions like this, this is what, let's say, this is what I want to measure. I cannot go this way and bend. No, that is going to affect things. And likewise, I cannot measure looking downward. No, that is going to give us what we call uh error or uh, due to parallax or what we call parallax uh, error so we need to avoid that when taking our measurement we have to take it looking vertically straight head on onto uh the points we uh want to uh measure um and that's just that about that uh let's take questions that relate to uh this very quickly as you can see on your screen i have a question displaying it says which of the following represent the correct precision when we say correct precision we're talking about reading accuracy our precision here is half of the smallest graduation look at it which of the following represent this correct precision if the length of a piece of wire is measured with a meter rule you see in the options here they are dealing in millimeters and when you are dealing in millimeters you measure to one decimal place you can see that so when you look at all of the options on what you have there option b is the uh, correct answer because it is to one decimal places but we are it to be that this is in centimeters then i have to now start looking out for things in two decimal uh places take note of 
uh, that question. That is even a UTME question. That's uh, 1986 uh, question one. Okay, let's take a look at another question as you can see on your screen. Which of the following readings cannot be determined with the meter rule? You can see this is in centimeter. And that's just about uh, what we just spoke about. When we talk about the precision or reading accuracy of a meter rule, it is half of the smallest graduation. And if we are dealing in centimeter, the smallest graduation is 0 0.1 centimeter. So what is half of 0 0.1, 0 0.05? What that means is that you cannot have something like 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.03, 0 0.04. You cannot have that. You cannot have 0 0.06. You cannot have 0 0.07, 0 0.08. No, you can only have 0 0.05. When you look at the option in what you have here, you, we know that since we are talking in centimeter, it is going to be to two decimal. It's going to be to two decimal places. But we cannot have five six. No, we cannot have five six. We can have five five. We can have 2.50. Yes, it is very possible. You know, when you say um, 2.50, uh, it is possible to store two decimal places and it rhymes. We can have 2.05 centimeter. Recall that this is 0 0.05. We can have 2.05. So, which means that if this is 2, if this is 2, if this is 2, then the next one is going to be 2.1. 2.2, 2.3, 2.4, 2.5, .2 .2 and then 2.6, 2.7, 2.8, and then you have 3, and then you have 3. So when you look at it, so 2.1, so if I have my measurement in between 2 and 2.1, which is here, talking about here, so that is going to be half of 0 0.1 that's 0 0.05 so 0 0.05 plus 2 that's 2.05 option uh d is possible 2.00 centimeter is possible but 2.56 is not possible because that means i did not uh, measure things accurately there was no precision i am just assuming for me to be talking 2.56 those are not uh, the figures for a meter uh, rule. Look at uh, the next question, the third question displaying. It says, which of the following instrument has a reading accuracy of 0 0.5 millimeter? Reading accuracy of 0 0.5 millimeter. You can see that is a meter rule. And you have the options there. Vernier calipers, micrometer screw gauge, meter rule, protractor, spring balance. Of course, this is a meter rule okay let's look at another question it says what is the least possible error in using a rule graduated in centimeters the least possible error the least possible error that is always half of the smallest units it was graduated in centimeters they say so half of the smallest units here if it was graduated in centimeters look at it half of the smallest unit. They said it was graduated in centimeter, so I'm gonna take that as one centimeter. So half of one centimeter is 0 0.5 centimeter. They said it was graduated in centimeter, so half of the smallest graduation, which is going to be one in this case, is 0 0.5 centimeter, and that is what you have there. You look at your uh, options there. Um, that is option B. Okay, uh, let's leave that. I want to quickly talk about. Um, so let's quickly uh, talk about errors. When talking about um, errors, when talking about errors, since we are make, uh, we are taking measurements, errors are inevitable. But the thing is, this errors is like this. This is actually what I am to measure, but this is what I ended up measuring or estimating so that my error is actually uh, what I am supposed to measure as original value, take away what I measure. So that's the difference between original value and what I ended up measuring. Imagine the real value, 
the real measurement is supposed to be 50 centimeter and then i ended up measuring 49 centimeter there is already an error of one centimeter there but uh, that said whichever way you look at it uh depending on the kind of rule you are using the metal rule i am using here the smallest gradation here is in one uh, centimeter so if you tell if you ask me what is the maximum possible error let's say i'm stuck between 40 and 41 so i would want to think just half between that 40 and 41 that is why maximum error possible uh, is half of the smallest gradation if my meter rule is in centimeters now so the maximum error here is going to be half of one centimeter half of one centimeter is going to be 0 0.5 centimeter that is the maximum possible error there and that was what we exactly have in this uh, question that we took then of course let's assume the uh, 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 30 cm rule you are holding on to that one is graduated in millimeters so that the smallest unit there is one millimeter so half of one millimeter is 0 .0 0.5 millimeter what that tells you is that the maximum possible error there is 0 0.5 millimeter so it is this uh your accuracy the accuracy we expect that at least you measure to is usually half of the smallest graduation and that leads to i haven't talked about mass error and that leads to the next thing when we say percentage error normally we know that percentage error is actually error over actual times 100 in this case uh, we can say percentage error the percentage error is the mass error possible the mass error possible divided by the original value yes yeah, divided by the uh, measurement itself times a hundred and that way you're not going to uh, miss it so we already know i already talked about mass error as half of the smallest graduation so uh, let's attempt some uh, questions you're going to see popping up on your screen now let's attempt some questions utm questions that relate uh to this let's attempt them you can see uh, the question on your screen it says what is the percentage reading error percentage reading error it's asking us percentage reading error percentage reading error in measuring a distance of five centimeter using a meter rule marked in millimeter you want to measure a distance of 5.00 centimeter and you're using a meter rule marked in millimeter so since it is marked in millimeter if it is marked in millimeter then the smallest graduation Record a meter rule, it is for a meter rule, it is smallest graduation is one millimeter or 0 0.1 centimeter. But in this case, we were told in the question that it was marked in millimeter. So smallest graduation here is one millimeter, and the mass error, the mass error is half of the smallest gradation half of one millimeter here so that is going to give us one millimeter divided by two that's going to give us 0 0.5 millimeters okay so that the percentage error is going to be mass error the maximum error here is 0 0.5 millimeters divided by what is the actual measurement this is five centimeter taking this to millimeter that would be five times ten that would be 50 millimeters okay 50 millimeters times a hundred so uh here one here two two times 0 0.5 that is one 
percent. That is the um, percentage um, error. That's option C there. That's the percentage reading error. It is one percent option C. You can see that there. Now let's look at another one. You can see what you have on your screen. The external. This is a UTME question. Uh, 1993 question 2 the external and internal diameter of a tube are measured as 32 plus or minus 2 and 21 plus or minus 1 so determine the percentage error in the thickness of the tube okay external diameter internal diameter this is what uh, that question means it means let me say okay let this be let this be the two external diameter is 32 plus or minus 2 that's 32 32 from here to here okay that's 32 um that's 32 and then the internal diameter is uh 20 as seen in the question 21 21 from here to here is 21 of course the error possible here one of them is a plus or minus two and the other one is uh one <coughs> plus or minus two plus or minus one so looking at this um we're going to look for the percentage error in the thickness the thickness is actually percentage error in the thickness okay the thickness is actually 32 minus 21 as you can see on your screen that is going to give us uh, 11 of course the uh, possible error here is plus or minus two, plus or minus one. That be the case, then in terms of the error here, it's going to be plus or minus two, minus plus or minus one, plus or minus uh, one. So that uh, according to the question, we we're told to calculate percentage error in the thickness of the two. So the percentage error. Is the error which is 1 divided by the thickness 11 times 100 so um, 1 over 11 times 100 that is 9.09 percent if you compute from your calculator that is 9.09 percent and that's approximately 9 percent if you look at the options there that is option I'll see this question is UTME 1993 question 2 okay that is talking about error percentage error percentage error is the maximum error possible divided by the measurement or the actual itself times a uh, hundred so that is that about uh, meta rule errors and uh, all of that let us move on into uh, another instrument we use for measuring lengths. Now, talking about vernier calipers, uh, I hope you're still with your 30 cm uh, ruler. Uh, when you talk about the meter rule, it measures to the smallest graduation, that's to an accuracy of one millimeter or 0 0.1 centimeter. That is the smallest graduation there. For more accurate measurement of length, we use vernier calipers or micrometer screw gauge for vernier calipers it could measure the smallest graduation here one millimeter divided into 10 places or 0 0.1 centimeter divided into 10 places you see one tenth of one millimeter so when we require accuracy more than what a meter rule can measure that's one millimeter or 0 0.1 centimeter we use a vernier caliper with a vernier scale and when we require accuracy, when we require accuracy to uh, 100, 100, 
of what the meter rule can measure, we use a micrometer screw gauge. Talking about our vernier calipers, uh, it has two scales. That's the main scale or the fifth scale, which is uh, also just like a meter rule, as you can see on your screen. And then you then have a movable scale or the vernier scale, which is what divides a millimeter into about 10 uh, places, one tenth of a millimeter. That is the uh, accuracy of a vernier caliper such that one over 10 of one millimeter is going to give you 0 0.1 millimeter if it's in centimeter, if it's graduated in centimeter. Now, one over 10 of 0 0.1 is going to give you 0 0.01. So we say that a vernier caliper measures to an accuracy of two decimal places. And now we take our readings on uh, this uh, uh, measuring instrument is that we add what we have on the main scale plus what we have on the vernier scale. Vernier calipers is 10 times, you see, more accurate than the metal rule, and it has two jaws. It has the internal jaws for measuring internal diameter. Say you know, we have a test tube. Say we have a test tube. To measure the external diameter, we use the external jaws. To measure the internal diameter, we use the internal jaw. We can see that on your uh, screen. So without wasting uh, much time, let's look at some questions that has to do uh, with uh, vernier calipers as uh, far as your UTME uh, probable question is uh, concerned so that you see what the uh, question looks like. Okay, look at the question displaying on your screen. It says, one of the following readings represent the measurement of the length of a meter rod using vernier calipers. Vernier calipers should measure to two decimal places. should measure to an accuracy of two decimal places. That's within really accuracy of two decimal places. If you look at the option there, uh, that is option A. It is to two decimal uh, places. Moving on, let's look at another question. Uh, that's talking about taking measurements. That's a UTME question, question 90, uh, number one. It says, what is the reading of the venial what is the reading of the vernier scale? When you look at that, it's before two. We, it stopped, the main scale stops at 1.8. The main scale stops at, main scale stops at 1.8. And then the vernier scale is the first point where the measurement on the uh, vernier scale tallies with the gradation of the uh, meter rule as you can see there uh one two three four five six seven eight is the eighth one and when you look at that that is uh 0 0.08 just like one tenth of the smallest graduation now to two decimal place that's 0 0.08 if you add to this that is going to give you 1.88 centimeter and that is option a as you can see on your screen moving on uh, we have another question, UTME 1999 question 7. It says, the inner diameter of a small test tube can be measured accurately using what? Inner diameters of a small test tube. Look at your screen. The diagram is there for you to see how we can measure the inner diameters of a test tube using the internal uh, jaws. So the answer there is option D, a pair of calipers. Also, Let's take more uh, question that relates to um, uh, a vernier caliper. Look at the question on your screen. UTME uh, 1994 question 1. The main scale is on 1, 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3. The main scale on the question you have there is on main scale is on 1.3. And then the vernier scale, which is to two decimal place. Let's look at the first one that tallies. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It is the ninth reading that tallies. So the answer there is not 1.79 because we are not even up to 1.5 on the main scale. It is not 1.73, but rather, this is 1.39, 1.39. So this is 0 0.09.
So 0 0.09 in centimeter, remember one tenth of a centimeter, that is 1.39. Option C, 1.39 centimeters. Okay, looking at the fourth, uh, 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 another question. Um, it goes, the diagram above represent a portion of a vernier caliper. What is the reading? You have six. We are not yet up to seven. So it is six. So let's look on the vernier scale. Which one tallies first? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's the eight. It looks one. Okay, when we look at the option, it's not A, it's not B, it's not uh, D, and it's not uh, E. The correct option there, the closest is 6.90 centimeter. They see the main scale is 6. So when you look at the first of the vernier scale that tallies with the main scale, that is 6.90 centimeter. So those are the kind of questions we get once it comes to a vernier a calipers now moving on to micrometer screw gauge recall uh, for a micrometer screw gauge when a vernier uh, scale is measuring up to one tenth of the smallest gradation of a meter rule a micrometer screw gauge will measure up to 100 of the smallest gradation on a meter rule good enough the micrometer screw gauge measures to an accuracy of uh 100 of 0 0.1 centimeter you recall that the uh small uh, the accuracy for a meter rule is 0 0.1 centimeter or one millimeter now for a vernier caliper the accuracy uh, there is one tenth of what you have on the meter rule so that is one divided by 10 0 0.1 millimeter even centimeter 0 0.1 divided by uh 10 that will give you 0 0.01 so that for a vernier caliper is to two decimal place. For a micrometer screw gauge, it measures to an accuracy of 100 what you have on a meter rule. So if we are dealing in the uh, unit of the millimeter, that would be 1 over 100 of 1 millimeter. So the accuracy in a micrometer screw gauge is 0 0.01 millimeter. But if in centimeters, that is 100 of 0 0.1 centimeter that is going to give us 0 0.001 centimeter to three decimal places for that reason a micrometer screw gauge measures to an accuracy of three uh, decimal uh, place but if in millimeter it is to two decimal place the micrometer screw gauge has two scale the main scale and then the uh, rotating scale or the timber scale now, on the uh, rotation scale, or that's the rotating scale as the timbre, a single rotation moves forward, a single rotation moves forward by 0 0.5 millimeter. A single rotation moves forward by 0 0.5 millimeter, and a single rotation has 50 divisions, so that each division on the rotating scale or on the timbre scale is 0 0.5 millimeter divided into 50 places that is going to give you 0 0.01 millimeter which still corresponds to the uh, reading accuracy of a micrometer uh, screw gauge so what that means is that when you are taking measurement with a micrometer screw gauge it is going to be the main scale usually most times in millimeter uh, plus the timber scale or the rotating scale or the timber <laughs> scale plus the timber scale or the rotating scale which is also in millimeter and then you add that uh, together a micrometer screw gauge can be used to measure the diameter of round objects as you can see on your screen uh, a micrometer screw gauge can be used to measure the diameter of round object but if you're talking about internal and external diameter of most cylindrical object take for instance a test tube then you use a vernier caliper since it can measure to an accuracy of 0 0.001 centimeter or 0 0.01 millimeter it can be used to measure the thickness of a paper and it can be used to measure the thickness 
of a thin uh, converging lens. That said, so very quickly, let's take some uh, questions that goes in line with a micrometer uh, screw gauge as used for measuring uh, thin length. Okay, uh, look at the question displaying on your screen. It says, which of the following can be used to measure accurately to three decimal places in centimeter? Without much ado, that is a micrometer screw gauge. It can measure to three, that's they said in centimeters. So in centimeters to three decimal place, that is a micrometer screw gauge. Option D is the answer there. Looking at the next question displaying on your screen, we were told, we have a diagram and we were told to, of course, take the reading of this instrument. If you look at the main scale, if you look at the main scale in that example there, the main scale, the main scale has uh, 0, 1, 2, 3. The main scale has 3 millimeters. It's in millimeters though. And then the symbol or the rotating scale, look at it, 20 to 25. You have 5 uh, readings there. So 20, 21, 22. That is uh, 0 0.22 millimeter. That is talking about the symbol or the rotating scale. You take this together. That is 3.22 millimeters. That is option E in this regard. Okay. Uh, still uh, moving on. Uh, let's look at another question. It says, the thickness of the central portion of a thin converging lens, just like we said there, thin lens, thin converging lens, we use a micrometer screw gauge. That is option uh, B. Uh, that way you begin to have a feel of what questions can look like uh, as far as measurement is concerned. Remember that your UTME is about how many points you can accumulate with uh, precision as well. Uh, moving on, let's take a look at another question. Look at the question displaying on your screen. We were told to take the reading of a micrometer screw gauge. Look at the main scale, 0 to 5. But in between 0 and 1, you have a 0 0.5. In between 1 and 2, you have a 1.5. So immediately after 5, before the rotating scale, we have a 0.5. So the main scale for this question here, the plane on your screen, the main scale is 5.5 millimeters. Now, what would be our rotating scale or our thimble is exactly on 15, matching uh, the main scale. So that is 0 0.15 millimeter. You take this together, 5.5 plus uh, 0.15, you're going to have 5.65 millimeters. Okay, uh, that says that. Another thing is, um, okay, look at the question. There's another question popping up on the uh, uh, screen now. We're told to also take uh, another reading from a micrometer screw gauge. You can see 0 to 1 to 2 to 3. And then between 15 and 20, that is 3.17 millimeters. And that answers everything about micrometer a screw gauge that you can expect. Moving on, uh, let's uh, quickly... So moving on, let's talk about uh, volumes of uh, matter. Of course, when you talk about volumes, you're looking at the space a material or matter occupies. Let's assume we have a key. Uh, something like this where all the sides are equal the volume here is L times L times L and that's a uh, L cube if it were to be a cuboid your volume is going to be length times breadth times height that's because these are regular solid if it's a sphere you use the volume, the formula for the volume of his of his sphere. That's four over three pi r uh, cube. If it's a cylinder, you use your formula uh, volume equals pi r square h. But when irregular, when a material is irregular, how do you measure uh, the volume? You measure the volume using you can measure the volume using uh, a measuring cylinder already graduated. Let's say this is a measuring cylinder already graduated. All you need to do is fill this up with uh, a liquid. Let this be. Let it be at L1. So let this be my irregular solid. If I, uh, of course, lower my irregular solid, 
into into this liquid now what will happen is that uh, i expect uh, this uh, irregular solid now to occupy this space in the liquid so that this liquid occupying this space before now moves up in other words we say it is displaced of the liquid this irregular solid had displaced is its own volume of the liquid so that it looks as though the liquid had risen but no doesn't actually reason only that uh, it had the liquid had been displaced from where it was before now the material the particles of liquid are now occupying another space so this is l2 now the volume of the irregular solid in this case is going to be l2 minus l1 that is how you find the volume of irregular uh, solid let's take a look at question that relates to this you can see on your screen say the volume of a stone having an irregular shape can be determined using what you use a measuring cylinder there very direct stuff we use a measuring cylinder to be able to uh do that you can see that on your screen okay moving on let's talk about uh, mass of uh, substances so so moving on uh time to talk about mass when you talk about the mass of materials it is actually the quantity of stuff the amount of materials the amount of matter contained in a body that is what mass is uh, mass is a scalar quantity mass is a scalar is a scalar quantity and it is measured in kilograms based on the si unit which we talked about under um fundamental quantities you, uh, and we measure the mass of bodies uh, using beam balance or chemical uh, balance which works on the principle of moment as you can see displaying on your screen you have a balance displaying on your screen so what we do is that um, in one of the in one of the uh, in one of the bands uh, known mass known mass is placed here whereas the mass to be measured m which we don't know is placed in uh the second uh uh, uh tree or let's say we call that uh, a pan okay we place that here of course uh we continue to uh adjust the known mass until a point of equilibrium is reached where both are leveled and there is no acceleration where the movement is zero and everything is balanced so that the mass here equals to the mass here just based on the principle of moments if this is the fulcrum this is the balance uh talking about okay this is my clockwise moment and this here is my anti-clockwise moment so what i do is that i'm going to place known masses i'm going to place known masses here and then unknown mass m i'm going to place a here then i begin to adjust the known mass until it is balanced when it is balanced then the mass here is actually equals to the mass here in the second uh part that is how we uh, use a beam balance to measure and it works based on the principle of moment which says that uh, at equilibrium anti-clockwise moment equals to clockwise uh, moment so that is how we measure mass talking about weight weights in its case is a vector quantity weight is a vector quantity it is a force and force is a vector quantity uh, weight is uh, mass times acceleration due to gravity which is given as 9.8 approximated as a 10 meter per second square and that is why the unit is kilogram per meter uh, kilogram meter per second square or given the special name newton weight is actually a force acting on objects due to gravity pulling on object due to gravity and weight is measured using a spring balance as you can see on your screen uh, the more the weight the more the extension produced in the spring in the uh, uh bar in the in the spring balance you know whatever mass you want to measure wants to get it onto the hook of the uh spring balance 
then an extension is produced. The more the weight, the more the extension. And that's why we say uh, a spring balance works based on Oak's law, which states that uh, extension producing an elastic material is dependent on the force acting on it. So depending on what way your weight you are hanging on the spring balance, now that is what will determine the uh, extension and consequently the graduated scale on the spring balance in Newton. Of course, we can quickly take a question that uh, relates to, uh, look at the question displaying on your screen. It says, to determine the weight of an object, you could use what? A, a beam balance, B, a spring balance, force uh, C, find the force necessary to give it certain acceleration. D, use none of this method, use any, no. The correct answer here is a spring balance. We use that to determine the weight of a body. That is 1978 question 10. Of course, looking at another question displaying on your screen, say which of the following statements are true about the spring balance and chemical balance? Both are used to measure the mass of an object. No, that's not true. Both are not used. One is used, the spring balance is to measure weight. The chemical balance is used to measure mass uh roman figure 2 says either of them may be used to measure the weight of an object no either no not either three spring balance works on the principle of hook's law why chemical balance works on the principle of moment yes roman figure 3 is true four a change in gravity changes the reading of a spring balance yes it's going to change the reading because recall that uh, weight is determined by mass times Accession due to gravity, where mass is going to be uh, constant in this case, G varies. So a change in gravity changes the reading of a spring balance, but not that of a chemical balance. Yes, that is true. So you see that Roman figure 3 and Roman figure 4 are true. And that is why the correct option there is option C. Roman figure 3 and Roman figure 4 holds sway. So that ends that. I'm moving on with more... Moving on with more questions, as you can see on your screen, they said, uh, Roman figure one, diameter of a small ball bearing. Roman figure two, thickness of a piece of paper. Roman figure three, diameter of a cylinder. Roman figure four, length of a piece of wire. Which of the above can be used, can be measured using a micrometer screw gauge? We can measure the diameter of a small ball bearing because it is circular, uh, it's a curve. Uh, thickness of a piece of paper, yes, we can use a micrometer screw gauge for that. Diameter of a measuring cylinder, no, we cannot uh, do that. We cannot do that, we cannot do that, we cannot do that. When you, when you are trying to measure the diameter of a measuring cylinder, you use your vernier caliper. Of course, for Roman figure, for length of a wire, no, we use a metal for that. So. When you look at this, one and two is the correct option. So what we use a micrometer screw gauge. What we use a micrometer screw gauge to uh, measure is actually uh, thickness of a piece of paper. I said that before, and uh, uh, and uh, ball bearing. I said that before now. Okay, okay. We can, based on the question displayed on your screen, we have Roman figure 1 to Roman figure 4 talking about what we can use uh, a micrometer screw gauge to measure. One, diameter of a small ball bearing. Yes, that is true. Uh, thickness of a piece of paper. That is true. Diameter of a measuring cylinder. We cannot use a measure a micrometer screw gauge there. We we'll use a cal vernier caliper there. Length of a piece of wire. We use a metal rule there. So when you look at this, a micrometer screw gauge can conveniently measure Roman figure one, which is a small ball bearing and thickness of a piece of paper. We talked about that before. Okay, moving on. Uh, in order to remove another question displays on your screen, it says, in order to remove error of parallax when taking measurements with a metal rod, the eye should be focused slantingly, no, towards the left. Of the markings no it should not be slanting be slanting towards the right of the markings no vertically downwards on the markings yes it should be vertically downwards on the marking 
not vertically upwards on the marking you measure this way you look vertically not by the right uh, not by the left not by the right not placing your meter rule looking up but you place your meter rule and then you look vertically downward to avoid uh, error of parallax and that is option uh, c that is 2012 question 2 as you can see so with that we have come to the end of the uh, topic uh, measurements recall uh we've looked used the the um, how to measure length how to measure mass uh, for the timing it is usually in uh, seconds it's something we can get by uh and that is that about uh that uh, do not forget this is the place you need to be to ensure that you ace your next uh, exam uh, for myself and the team here it's bye for now